General Ivey was fortunate enough to serve in a wide array of challenging assignments. He fought in Vietnam, where he was awarded the Bronze Star for Valor and the Purple Heart for Wounds Received in Action. He went on to command the armored cavalry, cavalry units excuse me, from platoon to brigade, including command of the 3rd Armored cavalry, cavalry Regiment, serving tours in the United States, Vietnam, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Germany. Major General Ivey served as the Army aide to President Ronald Reagan from 1984 to 1986, while seeing and unfolding a lot of global events. Additionally, Major General Ivey served as the Commander of the Military District of Washington and his final assignment as a Commandant of the Army War College. <coughs> Following 34 years of service to the nation, he continued to serve as the President of the University of St. Thomas in Houston, and now serves on the board of several corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Major General Retired Bob Ivani, class of 1969. Good evening, General Williams, General West, distinguished visitors, guests, and most importantly, members of the graduating class of 2019.
to learn from them and to be open to their ideas and to have that connectivity that comes with food and dairy. Now, so when you walk into the motor pool or into the barracks and the usual chatter and the wisecracking are missing and the soldiers don't look at you in the eye, you know there's something wrong. You ask your NCOs what's going on and you take the steps then to solve it. Empathy opens the door for you to walk in and discover the concerns of your soldiers. I was very fortunate that in one very memorable event in Vietnam, a soldier taught me the importance of empathy. And I'd like to share this very short war story with you. It was 1970. I had uh, gone to airborne school, ranger school, the Army Basic course, uh, had a state side assignment for a year, and then I was sent to Vietnam. I took command of a, of a tank platoon. Five sturdy F 48 tanks, 20 wonderful, hard working tankers. And the mission we had was to patrol a stretch of the DMZ, that's the demilitarized zone between North and South Vietnam. And we had mounted patrols during the day, and at night we pulled our tanks into a night defensive position. It's pretty hard to hide tanks. And so, so, you know, we, we said, look, we know we're out here, we know the enemy is out here, but we're going to really set up in such a position that they're not going to mess with us. And so normal, the normal routine was I have a, a huddle with my platoon, and we go over the routine for what would happen that evening. And uh, as we said, the men were on the ground there in front of me, you know, we just, you know, the usual routine. And then we had a practice where I would go out with two soldiers, and we would set up what we called a mechanical ambush. Uh, it was a tripwire that went across the trail, it was attached to some claymores, and we tried to pick the most likely enemy avenue approach that would hit us that evening. And so I would take two soldiers with me, and we set this up, usually it was just getting dark. And so at the end of the meeting, I said, okay, why don't you go with me uh, on the night patrol? And some soldiers raise their hand, which is always a good thing. And so as my eyes were across the platoon, I saw my, my own driver of my tank, a very trusty veteran. I said, okay, Randy, you come with me. And then as my eyes were across the platoon, I saw one soldier furiously raising his hand. My heart sank. Because this soldier was, well, he's not a bad soldier, you know, because the soldier is always at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, all at the same time. <laughs> oh, and of course, the soldier you want to take with you on a patrol, so my eyes just get right on going. <laughs> and then, you know, as soon as I did that, I saw his hand drop, his eyes fall, and this really pained expression in my face. I said, I know, I know what he's thinking. He's thinking the lieutenant doesn't want to take me on patrol. I'm known as the screwball man of the platoon. I might get somebody hurt. I don't really have a lot of respect here among anybody. You know, that's a big deal when you're when you're in a platoon like that, you're together with those guys 24 hours a day, weeks on end. And if you don't get along with people, they don't respect you, it doesn't just go away. It stays with you. So for some unknown reason, I went back to Soldier Call and Private Smith. I said, okay, Smith, you come too. <coughs> so as it got dark, we got geared up, we went down this ravine that led to our position. And after a while, it was so overgrown that we had to get on our hands and knees and we're slowly crawling forward. I was in the lead. Smith was behind me, and my trusty driver was bringing up the rear. As we crawled along, suddenly Smith yells, freeze! And so we froze. And then very calmly, he reaches over to my left foot, and picks up a hand grenade, 
which had a tripwire attached to it, which was wrapped around my left foot. He very calmly puts the pin back in. He says, here, Lieutenant. <laughs> I said, thank you, Smith. <laughs> Put the grenade back in my pocket. We crawled a little further forward. We set up our own mechanical ambulance. We walked out and back to our tanks. And then, you know, curiosity got the better of me. I said, and I got to know if this grenade would have gone off. So I alerted everybody, walked outside the perimeter, threw the grenade, and it went off. <laughs> so the next day, Smith was promoted. <laughs> within the platoon was fantastic because obviously he had yet stayed the lives of all three of us. And with that self-confidence and that new reputation, he became one of the most trusted members of the platoon. Now, my family and I, or I should say in, in retrospect, I guess I realized that I didn't want to disappoint the soldier. So I just sensed his his dejection, his disappointment, and I said to myself, I'll take a risk. I'll, 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 I'll give him a chance. And luckily for me and for my family, uh, he came through. So what, what does this really mean to you? I think what it means is that when you become a platoon leader and you get to know your soldiers, you've got to trust them. You've got to have that feeling in your gut that you know what they're thinking. And you take the appropriate action. You can't lead them unless you know them. And so, now that you're only a few months away uh, from graduation, when you do graduate and you're a West Point lieutenant, and people know that, your fellow officers, your soldiers, your NCOs, they'll know who you are. But he's so important for you to, first of all, be confident. Because no one, believe me, is better educated, better trained, and better prepared than you are. So be confident. And take that extra step to really get to know your soldiers. And I think you'll be amazed at how well they respond. You may not be saved, but I think you'll find it to be a huge, how should I say, reward and a feeling of accomplishment for yourselves once you get to know those soldiers. On behalf of my class, I wish you the very best. God bless you and good luck. Sir, on behalf of the Class of 2019, I'd like to present you with this gift as a, a token of your appreciation. I have our appreciation for your inspiring words.